From Pacifica, this is Democracy Now! Well, we're relieved that the Duma has granted us amnesty. However, all this is tempered by the fact that we were arrested for a crime we didn't commit. We were detained illegally for two months. Uh, and our, our biggest feeling is that this is it's about time something positive happened. As Russia grants amnesty to thousands of prisoners, we'll go to St. Petersburg to speak with two of them, Greenpeace activists who were arrested for trying to stop Russian oil drilling in the Arctic. Then Amazon justice. A court in Canada rules Ecuadorian farmers and fishermen can try to seize the assets of oil giant Chevron based on a 2011 decision that found the company liable for billions for oil pollution. But Chevron has filed its own lawsuit that argues the verdict is won through fabrication of evidence and bribery. Nearly every single person who's been named as a defendant in Chevron's retaliatory RICO suit has loved ones, has family members who've died, who have contracted cancer, who have suffered from birth defects and other oil-related illness due to Chevron's contamination. Uh, this lawsuit essentially uh, rubs salt in their wounds. We'll speak with Paul Barrett of Bloomberg Businessweek about how oil corporations from Chevron to BP are fighting lawsuits brought against them by attacking the lawyers handling the cases. Then, in a major victory for prisoner rights advocates, President Obama's commuted the sentences of eight people he said were serving unfair sentences for drug crimes, most of them sentenced to life in prison for charges related to crack cocaine. We'll get reaction from the ACLU's Jennifer Turner, author of the report, A Living Death, Life Without Parole for Nonviolent Offenses. All that and more, coming up. Welcome to Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. President Obama has commuted the sentences of eight prisoners serving lengthy terms for crack cocaine offenses, saying they were, quote, sentenced under an unfair system. That system included a hundred to one sentencing gap for crack and powder cocaine offenses, which was eased by a reform law in 2011. All eight people who received commutations have served more than 15 years in prison. Six had been sentenced to life. We'll have more on the story after headlines. In the Central African Republic, gunfire rang out in the capital, Bangui, today. As Christian fighters attacked Muslim neighborhoods, the country has faced a spiraling sectarian crisis since Muslim rebels ousted the Christian-led government in March. Amnesty International has warned both sides are committing war crimes. This is a situation where you have neighbors killing each other, and you have people who knew each other for a long, long time are killing and using machetes to not make more noise when killing. So we came across a lot of issues of uh, extrajudicial ex executions, mutilation of bodies. In fact, people were not only killing, they are killing and mutilating bodies. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations Samantha Power was in the Central African Republic Thursday to meet with the country's leaders and condemn the killings. Obviously. The Central African Republic uh, does not have in place right now uh, or has not yet pursued the kinds of investigations uh, and the kind of accountability that is needed. But we stressed that those responsible for atrocities must be held accountable. That is a very important element of preventing future violence and cycles of violence. The United Nations says violence in South Sudan has forced 34,000 people to seek refuge at its bases across the country, including the capital Juba and the flashpoint town of Bor. Violence erupted Sunday when President Salva Kiir accused his former vice president of mounting a coup. On Thursday, three U.N. peacekeepers from India were killed in an attack on a U.N. compound. Deputy U.N. Secretary General Lan Eliasson condemned the attack. Tell you how deeply concerned the Secretary General and I and our colleagues are about the current situation in South Sudan. Uh, our base in Akobo Jongle State was attacked, and we have reports that uh, lives are lost. We don't have the details of that yet. And of course, the Secretary General and I both condemn, uh, the, condemn this attack in the strongest terms. President Obama announced this week he sent 45 U.S. troops to South Sudan to protect U.S. citizens and property. Egypt's military-backed government's continuing its crackdown on activists involved in the 2011 uprising against Hosni Mubarak. 
Early Thursday, six people were arrested in a raid on an activist group that supports labor rights. Hours after the raid, a court acquitted Mubarak's two sons and his last prime minister of corruption charges. Uganda's parliament has passed an anti-gay bill that imposes a sentence of life in prison for repeated homosexual acts. It also makes it a crime not to report LGBT people. The bill, which was first proposed in 2009, has sparked global condemnation, but received support from evangelicals in the United States. Meanwhile, India's government has asked the Supreme Court to review its decision reinstating a ban on homosexual sex, saying it violates the principle of equality. In the United States, New Mexico has become the latest state to legalize marriage equality after its highest court ruled that denying same-sex marriage licenses is unconstitutional. New Mexico is the 17th state, along with Washington, D.C., to legalize same-sex marriage. The ruling takes effect immediately. Meanwhile, in Pennsylvania, officials with the United Methodist Church have defrocked a pastor who officiated at his son's marriage to another man. Frank Schaefer has told officials he could not uphold church teachings that he viewed as biased. He responded to Thursday's decision at a news conference. As you can tell, I'm uh, visibly shaken. I, uh, I guess when I went into the hearing this morning with the Board of Ordained Ministry, I was hopeful that it wouldn't come to what it has come to my defrockment. Uh, I am a very positive person. I'm an optimist, you could say. I always look at the glass half full. And I said to myself, you know, I, I just can't see them take my credentials. I mean, what I did was an act of love for my son. And uh, they did anyhow. The Senate has passed a sweeping Pentagon bill that keeps military sexual assault cases within the chain of command, while adding some new protections for survivors. It also raises military pay by 1 percent and bars the transfer of Guantanamo prisoners to the United States. Democratic Majority Leader Harry Reid vowed the Senate will take up the issue of unemployment benefits in early January when it returns from break. Jobless payments will expire for 1.3 million people just three days after Christmas. A former BP engineer has been convicted of obstruction of justice for deleting text messages about the 2010 oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Kurt Mix could face up to 20 years in prison. He's the first person to be tried for the incident, which killed 11 workers and caused one of the worst environmental disasters in U.S. history. A new government study has linked the disaster to lung disease, hormonal problems and other illnesses among dolphins in the region, many of whom are dying. In Belgium, protesters opposed to austerity and so-called free trade shut down traffic in parts of Brussels on the opening day of the European Union summit on Thursday. Some 10,000 protesters took to the streets to oppose secretive negotiations for a massive trade deal between the United States and Europe, which they say would favor corporations and undermine protections from food safety to workers' rights. Pasco Sabido of the Corporate Europe Observatory spoke at Thursday's action. So we're here today uh, to block the EU summit where our so-called leaders are meeting to make sure that two treaties, the uh, Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, the free trade deal with the US, as well as the TSCG, which is basically an a treaty of austerity, make sure they don't go forward and uh, to make sure that actually our voices here in the streets across society uh, are not just listened to, but make sure we're not complicit in this. Um, so we're here to say, no, this will not happen, and enough is enough. Um, and we're going to try and build a Europe from below. And the Obama administration says it deported 369,000 immigrants during the past fiscal year. That's a 10 percent decrease over last year's record of 410,000, marking the first time deportations have dropped during Obama's tenure. In a statement, Marissa Franco of the National Day Labor Organizing Network said, quote, the biggest fear of immigrant families is becoming a number in the statistics released today. No matter what direction the numbers go in, the fear entrenched in people's lives won't be removed until the threat is eliminated. That can only be done by a president who recognizes the error of his ways and reverses course on the dragnet he's built, she said. And those are some of the headlines. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Juan Gonzalez. Welcome to all of our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. 
I'm Amy Goodman. Thanks so much for watching this report from Democracy Now!, your daily independent global grassroots news hour. We don't accept advertising or corporate funding, but rather rely on donations from viewers like you. Please make your contribution by visiting democracynow.org today. We need your support today to keep bringing you this hard-hitting, in-depth reporting.